38 year old woman presents to the emergency department with nausea and progressive right upper quadrant abdominal pain for the past day for the past year she has had occasional pain in her right upper quadrant which is also relieved on its own after a few hours she was recently diagnosed with multiple gallstones for which she underwent an elective uncomplicated ERCP 3 days ago past medical history is otherwise unremarkable on physical examination there is tenderness over the epigastrium with no guarding or rebound vital signs include blood pressure 110 by 68 pulse 98 temperature 36 and respiratory rate 11 per minute laboratory testing are pending and imaging stereo of abdominal confirms most likely diagnosis which of the following is expected to be below the normal range in her blood due to this patient's current condition A trypsinogen, B C-reactive protein, C lipase, D glucose, and E calcium. Calcium. Now, reading the question, what 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 comes to your mind initially? The patient underwent ERCP three days ago, right? So uh, this should bring to you pancreatitis post ERCP complication. One thing, however. Uh, The question stem does not have classic acute pancreatitis symptoms, which will usually be given as epigastric pain radiating to the back. Here, the patient has nausea and progressive right upper quadrant abdominal pain. Right, that could be confusing. Uh, but in this case, what can we do? Just have a look at the options. Options shows trypsinogen, CRP, lipase, calcium, all of this. So connecting the two. Post ERCP state and these options, you you should your mind should go towards acute pancreatitis, right? Now, what is acute pancreatitis? Uh, it occurs due to there are mainly two causes: either uh, due to acute alcohol consumption, uh, alcohol will act as direct toxin and it will damage pancreas. Alcohol will also increase the pancreatic enzyme secretion. Another cause. is gallstone gallstone will cause an obstruction uh, at the level of anterior aorta so what happens is this is the duct of pancreas this is pancreas here the common bile duct will join this is from the anterior aorta which will empty into duodenum if there is obstruction by gallstone here the pancreatic enzymes will not be able to drain Back up into the pancreas, and in case of ERCP, uh, ERCP is like a scoop will pass from here to duodenum into this cell to visualize the common bile duct and the pathology. So this scoop will cause damage to com- uh, this epithelial vessel and the duct sometimes. Uh, because of this damage, there will be two things: uh, there will be an increase in the enzyme secretion, and also there will be um, obstruction. The, now the patients who have some uh, spasm of the sphincter of odi here there is the sphincter of odi will be more prone to this post ERCP complication because of this blockage the enzymes will back up enzymes will activate within the pancreas and uh, the trypsinogen will be activated to trypsin this will lead to activation of other enzymes like uh, pro elastase to elastase one And because of this elastase, it will cause the uh, cause damage to capillaries, right? Um, another is called lipase will be activated to lipase. We all know these are the enzymes useful in normal digest digestion, activated by trypsin. Usually, this uh, everything occurs in the duodenum, but since there is a blockage, everything will back up in the pancreas and will lead to activation of these enzymes. Called lipase, uh, uh, activating to lipase will cause The breakdown of lipids to fatty acids. Everything now occurs in the pancreas and peripancreatic space, right? So breakdown of lipids into fatty acids and glycerol. This will lead to deposition of calcium, uh, right? Calcium combines with fatty acids, and this will deposit. Uh, and the usual entire inflammatory uh, process will proceed. So here in question, we are being asked. Which of the following is expected to be below the normal range, right? Below. Um, since calcium will deposit into the fatty, it will combine with fatty acids. Level of calcium will decrease in serum. That's why the correct answer here is calcium. 
Now let's have a look at the other options. We'll always do that. See, even in exam, you're going to mark a correct answer and look at all the options. Just make sure, just eliminate every other option. This will significantly increase your accuracy and your chance of getting an answer correct. So trypsinogen. Trypsinogen is sort of one of the markers for acute pancreatitis because uh, trypsinogen will back up okay, in the pancreas because of elastic, there is damage of the capillaries. So trypsinogen will leak back into the blood. So serum trypsinogen level will increase. CRP is an inflammatory marker. Your there is significant inflammation actually. CRP level will increase. Lipase, also this is another marker of acute pancreatitis. Level of lipase will increase. Glucose, because pancreas is involved and again because of inflammation, there is uh, stress to the body, the stress hormones, even glucose will increase. Right? Uh, also, you can derive that the only thing decreasing here is calcium. Right? Acute pancreatitis, you can diagnose, there are two criteria which have to be satisfied out of three criteria. First is the classic abdominal pain, epigastric abdominal pain radiating to the back. Second is the increase in level of lipase and amylase. The value should increase to more than three times the limit of normal. Then it is a criteria. Another is imaging criteria using CT scan. There are characteristic uh, edema of the pancreatic ball, peripancreatic fluid, all of those. In most cases, the patient will present with a classic pain and the labs will show three times increase in the values of lipase and amylase. So these two criteria are enough for a diagnosis most of the times. You don't need a CT scan, but CT scan can be done in a few complicated cases too. Okay? So here the answer is E. Calcium is the correct answer. Thanks for watching. Please give a thumbs up and subscribe for more.